What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Today I have a very special guest. He's gonna tell us all about the field of dentistry as well as some tips for you guys on how to become a dentist, a uh, typical day in the life, as well as some uh, tips for everyone else out there. I wanna welcome Dr. Hayes. Thank you for coming on with me today. Uh, how are you doing, Dr. Hayes? I'm doing good, man, and I'm excited to share some information information about dentistry. Awesome. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself for the people who uh, may not know you, and um, just tell us uh, kind of who you are and what you do. I'm Dr. Darwin Hayes. I, uh, I'm a general dentist. I've been practicing dentistry for about 20 years now. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> so by fast. Dentistry was not, was not my first career. Actually, this is my second career. I was, wow. I was an architect wow. and actually made a change, got into dentistry. It's been a great change for me. I have some uh, some family history with dentistry. My dad is a dental technician, and my uncle is an actual dentist. Uh, but growing up, really didn't really dentistry wasn't something that I was really looking at. I was, yeah. As a, as a creative person and person that likes arts, I was more on the uh, wanting to build uh, bridges and 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 buildings and houses and things like that. And that's where my my interest was. Had a practice also in. Uh, California, Burbank, California for many years and just recently in, in the last seven years moved back to the East Coast where I'm where I'm currently a program director for residency, GPR residency for dentists that have graduated dental school and getting some advanced, you know, just like yourself, getting uh, as a resident, getting some advanced training. So I've been doing that for about five years and I love it. I love it. All right. Awesome. And uh, why was that uh, you transitioned from architect to becoming a dentist? Uh, what, what made you uh, kind of make that transition? And what, what was it about dentistry? Well, I think for me, what, what it was about dentistry at the time was that it was a family business. And uh, in a lot of a lot of dentists or a lot of um, people that get into dentistry usually have an influence on the orthodontist and, and what they were doing to maybe even having a family member that's a, that's a dentist. And usually that's a common path for a lot of people. But for me, like I said, I, even though I had dentistry in my family, it wasn't something I was interested to. It wasn't something I was interested in at the time. For me, the big thing was my uncle. Uh, it was my mom's brother, very uh, influential, kind of like a big brother to me, but he's, a, he was, he's always been an, a, an opinion leader uh, for me. And... One day we had a family reunion and he was the keynote speaker and he made reference to the fact of, of, of the, the whole notion of family and how happy he was uh, being around family, seeing people he hadn't seen in years. And, I, you know, call it crazy, but it was just something that snapped for me. It was like, oh, family, family business. Yeah, I can become a dentist, work with my uncle. We can have a family business and keep keep this tradition going on. So the thing for me was that I liked working with people. I liked working uh, with my hands. That was a thing that was really interesting about, you know, about the dentistry for me. My uncle's influence, being able to, to be a business person and, uh, you know, just really having some, maybe some more autonomy uh, as, a, as a practitioner, as a, as a, as a, as a dentist, having not uh, autonomy i think that was something that i really was searching for as an architect yeah you can get your own business but typically you're working for a much larger firm that's um that is um already established and you know um for me it was something that i wanted to have something on my own uh, to become a dentist i know you have to have a bachelor's degree and then take some prereqs and then it is the admission test can you be briefly speak about that What's required to become a dentist? This is definitely a process. Um, you know, many, many undergrads that are pursuing or interested in pursuing dentistry will probably go anywhere like a pre-med or a pre-dental track. Uh, a very, I had a lot of classmates that were biology majors, chemistry majors. Um, and we even had in my class, we even had a couple people that were nutrition and non-traditional students, business uh, architecture, engineering, uh -huh. but for the most part, there are some core classes that you just have to take. 
uh, like I said, biology, chemistry, organic, um, uh, physics, um, and there, there's also some math, some calculus that you also have to take. So that's the first part. The second part is the DAT, the dental emissions test. Um, and that has four sections that you have to, um, that you have to, that you'll be tested on, um, natural sciences, perceptual ability, there's a reading comprehension, and then there's also a quantitative analysis, um, perceptual ability, kind of seeing how you can move objects and see three dimensional things and how, how you can kind of visualize things that are in 2d but how they actually look like, what they would look like in, in the third dimension. Reading comprehension, pretty straightforward, and quantitative analysis, different things with algebra, uh, exponent, exponential equations, things like that. So that DAT is really the key for many people pursuing dentistry. Sure. That DAT is pretty much your, your ticket into dental school. The higher the score, the... Uh, the more likelihood that you'll get some interviews and uh, have schools being, you know, being interested in, uh, in, in you as a candidate. But that's just one of the part, you know, that's the, that's the main part. You still have to apply. You have your personal statement. Um, they want candidates, you know, we want candidates that are actually familiar with uh, office, the office and working in the office, shadowing an office, being familiar with how the dynamics and the flow of a dental practice kind of, kind of works. Okay. And once you get into dental school, is it similar to medical school? The first and second years are more textbook and the third and fourth are more clinical. Is that how it is in dental school as well? It is, but it's that times times two. But one of the things that's different for us as dentists is that we have to add the preclinical, how to prepare crowns and preparations for uh, restorations, all that we, we're also learning that's you know part of the part of it is being incorporated during those first two years where you have uh, anywhere from, you know, 20 to 30 hours of, uh, of uh, credit hours of, of content. So you've got the basic sciences and you have the preclinicals all within your first two years. Then your D3 or D4 year, your third and fourth year, then for the most part, that's your clinical time. Uh, that's when you're in the clinic nine to five, you may have classes in the morning or the evening but for the most part that's the second half of your of your dental training that's where you're actually going to be working with patients more readily uh, from nine to five gotcha and once you're done with dental school can you go straight to work or do most people do a residency and what are some potential residency options out there that you can do so typically right out of dental school uh, probably 30 40 years ago it was very typical that people just got their shingle, yeah. hung it up, and they started practicing just like that, right? Yeah. But now there's there's been a trend probably in the last 15, I'll say 15 to 20 years, and, and it's increasing now as we speak, that a lot more uh, graduates of dental, dental schools are going into doing a residency. Mm. Now, one thing that's different between dentistry and, and medicine is that in dentistry, a residency is not required. It's yeah. not required. It's not required to... To get a job is not required to get a license, but actually, typically, um, people will go that route just to get some additional training. All right, because there's a lot of things that you just as as a new as a new grad, there's a lot of things that you that you don't even know that you don't know until you yeah. get into a situation where you realize, oh shucks, I don't know how to, I don't really don't feel comfortable doing this procedure. Yeah. So doing a residency is is uh, one option that a lot more graduates are, are you know uh, leaning towards now i will say in the state of new york to get a license to practice dentistry in the state of new york you must do a residency you must do a gpr general practice residency which is a hospital-based dentistry uh, residency or you must do an aegd which is an advanced education in general dentistry it's typically uh at a, at a dental school uh at the dental school level so in New York, you have to do a residency to get a license. States like Cal uh, California, Delaware, I think uh, Ohio, it's it's optional. That year of residency helps a lot of new graduates make that transition from being more confident, but also managing the patients and, and having the confidence level and picking up their speed. 
that's probably the one of the biggest, biggest things that uh, one of the reasons why I recommend doing a residency for a lot of uh, for new graduates. Okay. And what are some of those potential residency options that you can do um, once you're done with dental school? Right. So it could be either hospital based, which is a which is a, a general practice residency, which is hospital based. All right, where you actually dentistry, but you also have exposure. You have usually typically have two mandatory um, rotations in family medicine, and then also in anesthesia. Hmm. About eighty hours of both of those in, in family medicine or or internal medicine. You're also going to be on call for most of the hospital-based general practice residencies for dentistry. You're on call. It can vary, and then like I said, there's also residencies where you're actually general dentistry but more in the school-based uh, programs. So there's no call. There's no hospital rotations. There's also a lot of options. This is the time that some graduates, recent graduates, want to specialize. Mm -hmm. Some of the most popular are orthodontics, right, getting braces, pedodontics, working with kids, mm -hmm. prosthodontists, uh, making uh, dentures and, and doing um, maxillofacial uh, prosthesis, um, endodontist, treating root canals, and performing root canals, and then also very, very uh, popular uh, and also very competitive uh, specialty is oral surgery, oral maxillofacial surgery. So those are also some residency options for many people that have the aspirations uh, in becoming a specialist in those areas. Gotcha. Um, and you are known as the new dentist coach. Can you speak about some of the... Uh uh, the, the role that you play in helping new dentists kind of find their paths? One of the things I've noticed as a program director at the, kind of like the, towards the completion of your, uh, of most dentist training after dental school, one of the things I realized I've seen is that most of us as new dentists, we don't, again, we don't know what we don't know until yeah. we get up into a situation where we realize we don't know it. So there's so much more to be to be learned and to be exposed to that you just don't have enough time in dental school to find out about. So one of the things that I've uh, enjoyed doing as part of my goal and purpose is to try to help as many new dentists as possible with personal and professional development. And when I say new dentists, I mean from the pre-dental student all the way through the resident and to those that have been practicing uh, five years or less. Dentistry, just like medicine, is, is constantly changing yeah. new materials, new technology, uh, to the point where there's just so much information out here that uh, the schools are just not able to keep up and be able to, to deliver the information during the four years that, the, that you're in school. Mm -hmm. So to try to bridge the gap in providing information uh, to those that are applying to dental school for the first time. Also, those dental students that are thinking about specializing or actually uh, reasons why they should do a residency. I always I have a lecture where I, say, I talk about uh, the nine reasons why doing a residency is not optional. You must do a residency. Sure. And, uh, and also, you know, going to speak to student groups uh, about options, about Finding a mentor, how crucial and, and, and very uh, important that is to have someone kind of mentor you. Doing presentations uh, and seminars uh, for those new dentists that have been practicing, that are now finished with residency and that are looking to become associates or even becoming owners. There's just a lot of information that uh, new dentists can benefit from. Uh, if you have a mentor and a coach. So that's been my role over these last couple of years and really starting to develop that for, for, for new dentists. Gotcha. Um, and do you have any other advice for people out there that are interested in dentistry or a field of uh, becoming a dentist? What, what advice would you have for them? Well, one of the things I would tell them first and foremost is sure that becoming a dentist is what you want to do. Mm -hmm. All right. It's a lot of time to be doing other things. All right. So it requires that you've made that commitment. Second point of, a point of advice is keep in mind that it's a marathon. All right. It's a long race. This, this, this whole development and becoming a dentist. I know a lot. I have a lot of students and uh, mentees and also residents that are 
They want the results right now, ASAP, tomorrow. And unfortunately, that's not how it works. And it's a process. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. So you have to keep in mind that it's a process. It helps you stay grounded and be reminded in that is having a mentor, having a coach, uh, being connected with those that are, um, that are doing what you want to do. Uh, I actually have a, a couple of mentees that I already know that are their first and second year in dental school, and they already know they want to be a oral surgeon. Or they already know that they want to be an endodontist. So I constantly try to uh, get them to think about the long term and things that they're doing today that's going to help them get to their end goal. Another piece of advice is uh, keep in mind that, that dentistry is a business. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a, it's a service that you're providing to, to patients and to people um, in delivering oral health care, making them feel better, improving their confidence, their smiles, uh, eradicating diseases, getting them out of pain. But it's also a business. Uh, we what we're trained to do if we don't know how to get people in the door and also how to um, build relationships with, with with our customers. So another piece of advice is to make sure that for every class that we're taking, continue education as it relates to clinical, for every three classes that you're taking, I always tell my mentees, you should be taking at least one or two uh, classes on, on the business side of, of dentistry, of mm -hmm. business, uh, of uh, entrepreneurship, um, on how to deal with patients and building relationships, how to talk to people. All of that is very, very uh, crucial, allowing you, allowing us to be able to provide the services uh, that we've been trained to do for our patients. Okay. And if anyone wanted to contact you, um, I know you have a website and a YouTube page. Can you uh, please give us uh, your social media contacts? Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you have questions, uh, I get a lot of uh, feedback and get a lot of people asking me questions about they're fearful about things that are they're concerned and about this process of becoming a dentist. Uh, I tell people just send them to me on my Gmail. Mm -hmm. Coach, new dentist coach at gmail.com. Also, a lot of the things very similar to you, Dr. Webb, as far as uh, providing content. I have a YouTube after Dr. Darwin Speaks. Uh, YouTube, just, just go into the search and put in Dr. Darwin speaks and it's content as it relates to how to apply to dental school, how to get the attention of, of, uh, of uh, those that are going to be interviewing you. Tips on making sure that you are getting out of obscurity, making sure that you're known. Tips on um, how to interview and tips on how to find a, how to find a, find a job. All those different types of things. Um, we're on that on are on that YouTube page and at Dr. Darwin Speaks. Yeah, and I'll put the, yeah, link I'm sorry. Video, the description as well as the video. I want to thank you, Dr. Uh, Hayes, for uh, joining me today. Um, and thank you, everyone else out, out there watching. Please uh, subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Make sure you check the description below for links to Dr. Uh, Hayes as well as in the video. And uh, we'll see you next time.